say the words artificial intelligence to a group of doctors, and I'm gonna bet that half are gonna be excited and the other half are gonna tune you out. It's partially because of a lack of understanding of how broad AI is, and also because of all these articles that question whether or not AI is gonna replace doctors. It's not going to. But recently, artificial intelligence in healthcare skyrocketed up the Twitter debate ranks because of two stories. One, about an autonomous chest x-ray analyzer that was recently approved for clinical use in the European Union, and another about how AI is helping hospitals save lives. And that one is focused mostly on sepsis risk algorithms. Artificial intelligence is simply a computer algorithm that mimics human intelligence. It looks at data, finds patterns, and then makes a decision. And this is already happening when it comes to sepsis risk. Imagine training a machine learning model to flag patients at risk for sepsis using 32 million data points from 42,000 patient encounters. This is exactly what researchers at Duke University Hospital did when they created Sepsis Watch. And the researchers found that the proper use of the sepsis bundle, antibiotics, labs, all that, increased to 64% in the 15 months after they started using Sepsis Watch. And this is up from 31% in the 18 months prior. Basically with Sepsis Watch, patient data is entered automatically into the model every five minutes. And then if a patient meets SERS criteria, a rapid response team, clinicians and doctors get together and make a call on the next steps. Another healthcare system, HCA Healthcare, has its own tool called SPOT, or Sepsis Prediction and Optimization Therapy. And they claim that SPOT can catch sepsis six hours earlier and more accurately than clinicians can. I mean, hey, if AI can help us prevent sepsis deaths, then awesome. Machine learning still requires manual data entry and interpretation of that data. So clinical oversight is a necessity for any artificial intelligence that involves direct patient care, regardless of what tech investors say. Without naming any companies, I read about one that is a patient data analytical software that claims they can reduce unnecessary lab ordering. Think about that for a second. Would any physician not order a lab just because the machine told them not to? Not likely. There's gonna be some clinical oversight. There's even research about using machine learning models to predict which patients are most likely to be readmitted to the hospital and then getting them specialized education on discharge. The algorithm looks for factors such as polypharmacy, chronic conditions, and a history of readmissions. Well, sure, following this rule could prevent some readmissions, but what about patients who have high-level anxiety or don't have any follow-up or have low health literacy? AI isn't picking up any of that. I would hate for a patient to fall through the cracks because of the inherent bias of machine learning. Remember, if a model is designed by a human, then it can be designed with limitations and biases. Speaking of limitations, let's talk about artificial intelligence in imaging, which is causing a lot of chat. This spring, the Chesslink AI Autonomous Imaging Suite by developer Oxipit was approved for use in the European Union. This is artificial intelligence meets chest x-rays. Long story short, the technology reads a chest x-ray, and if the technology says it's normal, the patient automatically gets a message. The press release for Chesslink claims it'll help with the global radiology shortage, and they're applying for FDA approval. But the technology is not nearly as popular here in the United States. Neither the Radiology Society of North America nor the American College of Radiology think that AI alone can pick up those subtle chest x-ray abnormalities. It's gonna need a radiologist to double check its work. Take a look at EKGs, which have had computer interpretations on them for years. But when in doubt, you talk to a cardiologist and they're read by hand. I've even done my fair share of counting the little boxes to calculate a QT interval with the on-call cardiologist. But to improve access in resource limited areas, some companies are using a convoluted neural network, which I barely understand, to improve the AI interpretation of EKGs. Well, time will tell how accurate they are. In the end, a human has to be there to build trust, know what questions to ask, what data to collect, and then know what to do with all the information. And that takes the art of medicine. Sorry, machines. But honestly, Artificial intelligence just needs some rebranding and maybe a new PR team because there are a lot of really cool applications. I pulled a few of them up. 
like lab automation and specimen organizing, pathology, specimen assessment, drug development, identifying patients for clinical trials, mental health assessments, individualized physical therapy, charting. There's so many ways we can use this technology. I think we'll end up working side by side with AI, but what do you all think? Do you have any experience of working with artificial intelligence? Do you think it'll improve or hinder your workflow? I mean, maybe AI can make EMR a little less annoying. That would be a win. But for real, if you could improve any aspect of patient care with a machine learning model, what would it be? We want to hear from you. Comment below.